Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to uh, the Tuesday night training call. She needed a hero, so she became one. I have to say that I really, really need this call tonight. Um, sending massive prayers and positive energy down to South Florida, um, who is looking at a Category 5 hurricane hitting them. So have some anxiety today. And so that's especially why I needed to do this call. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that you're here. And um, I want to give you a little background story about this title and how I even came up with this. So um, I saw this quote a couple years ago and I thought, hmm, that's me. That's what I did. I needed a hero and I became one. So that's where all this came from, this call. And it's, it's pretty powerful because for years and years and years, I was trying to save people, not just my ex, you know, really anybody, everybody, um, even strangers, just trying to save everybody and not realizing at the time that we all have our own journeys and there's nobody that I can save but me. So with all that being said, even with this hurricane coming and all of my, my entire family down there, except for my daughter who's in the next room, um, I have to just, if they want to stay there and ride out this storm, there's nothing I can do. So let's get to the call. She needed a hero, so she became one. I am Denise Dominguez. I am so excited to be here with you today. And um, I want to give you a little backdrop about myself. I am a speaker coach and best-selling author. And my most recent book was released last October 2016 called A New Day Dawns, Breaking Up with Abuse. Yeah. And uh, I hosted a podcast called It's Your Turn Radio for two years on Blog Talk Radio. I help women heal their emotional wounds all over the world so that they can live a life of freedom, joy, and abundance. I do this by having them embrace and connect with who they really are so she can begin to experience healthy relationships, a fulfilling life, and more money in her business. So, I'm just going to share the screen real quick so that you can um, share screen. There we go. Start sharing. Um, that is the cover to my book um, that launched last year. And not only um, did it become a Amazon bestseller, but it also became an uh, Amazon international bestseller, which I was super excited about. Okay, um, so yeah, that's pretty awesome cover, right? I love the beach, so especially I love that. So I also teach women on how to create more money in their life because let's face it, ladies, as a woman and especially as a single woman, what is the one most important thing that we need, right? More money. So you start talking about that this year. But, you know, my life wasn't always this incredibly awesome. In fact, there was a time when I used to cry myself to sleep nearly every night. And that was because I was in a very abusive relationship, married, marriage, and I was miserable. Totally miserable. Um, not just unhappy. Not just I needed to tweak a few things here or there. No, I was miserable. My marriage was abusive emotionally, mentally, and financially. And I was married to a narcissist and a drug addict. Yeah, double whammy. Because, you know, if you know me, it's go big or go home. Couldn't just settle for one. I had to have both, right? <laughs> it's uh, funny, but not funny. So for 22 years, I felt stuck. For 22 years, I felt I had no other choice but to stay. And as time went on, things got worse. 
right? They always do. Of course, there were signs in the beginning of our relationship before we even got married. There were red flags that I ignored or just didn't want to see. He was abusive then. And as you know now, the abuse never gets better. It always gets worse. He would kick me out of the house and be mean to me, um, making me cry, being controlling, wanting me to stay at home and not work, right? So control the money, not have friends, controlling the money, um, giving me the silent treatment for not hours, not days, but weeks. Yes. And, you know, the list goes on and on. I ignored those signs. And went ahead and married him anyway and had two kids. So the abuse continued in the first trimester of both of my pregnancies. I tested positive for STD. I denied that fact and tried to find an excuse for how that happened. I denied that was even possible, right? Nobody wants to think that their husband is out doing that, especially when you're carrying an unborn child inside of you. So, um, I mean, I was pregnant with our babies, right? Um, you know, it just, it didn't, I couldn't accept that fact that um, he would cheat and especially, um, okay, so you're going to cheat like, at least protect yourself, right? From things like that. Protect me, protect our children. But um, I refused to believe this truth and brushed it under the rug and left it alone. Years went by um, and things got worse. Um, The kids started school and he uh, discovered abusing pills and quickly got addicted to that and that's when my mother energy came out full force and i was taking care of him so if you're my client then you know what mother energy means um if you're not my client and you want to know what mother energy is right it's kind of self-explanatory but it's i go into a much deeper level of what mother energy is, then we can get on a phone and I will um, tell you all about it. So there was a time I remember when he had kicked me out in the middle of an argument. And honestly, I couldn't tell you what that argument was about, but I can tell you this. It was a mind numbing and useless one, right? Um, Definitely. That's the majority, like 99% of them. We often got into arguments that turned into drama fests, like they exploded and blew up into big, way bigger than what they needed to be. Um, Things got way out of proportion and it was like an explosion because that's what drugs does, right? Takes everything out of proportion. That's what a narcissist does, right? And I'm not sitting back and not taking any blame here because I fed into that too. So I don't want by any means for anybody to think that I'm the innocent one. But there was a lot of unnecessary crap in my life. And that's what my life was back then, filled with trauma and drama all of the time. Lots of abuse, lots of my shine being dimmed down. And that's really important to um, to realize is that when you're with somebody who is abusive, um, that's what they're doing. They're dimming down your shine, right? They're they're putting you down. They're making you small. Of course, I was allowing that, but you know, for so long, ladies, for so long, I waited and waited for someone or something to save me from what was going for what I was going through. I was waiting for a breakthrough. I was waiting for things to get better. 
honestly, I don't know what I was waiting for. I was just waiting for something to happen to get better. Like you always hold on to that hope that things are going to get better. But guess what? Things only got worse. Do you know why? It was because I was waiting for someone or something to come and save me from my chaotic life. No one was coming to save me. My knight in shining armor did not exist outside of me. Instead, it existed inside of me. But I didn't know that at the time. Everything I needed was already there inside of me and waiting for me to get out on my get out of my own way. Um, it was me. I am my knight in shining armor. I am the only one who can save me. And you are too. You are the only one who can make a difference in your life. You are your hero. And to show you exactly what that means, that's what we're going to discuss in this call. So I've been thinking of ways that I can help you get the tools that you need to move through this process with more joy and ease. Doesn't that sound inviting? So first thing is, is to have the awareness that no one is coming to save you. Like if I only knew back then, um, instead of waiting and wishing on a star that something or someone was, something was going to happen and save me or save the situation or things were going to get better, I could have cut off a lot of years. So first thing is to have that awareness that no one is coming to save you. You are the only one that can save you. Okay, that's, that's number one. Number two, the second thing is you must start to change your mindset. Don't believe the stories or the lies that were told to you growing up. You are worthy. You are enough. And you are love. Okay, that is number two. Number three, the third thing is to start to be patient and kind to yourself. That's super, super important. And something as us women do not do. Um, hold on, I'm going to, I'm going to mute everybody. If you want to um, ask questions or have any comments, just hover over the bottom and there's a chat box and um, you can talk to me there. Okay, so, um, so yeah, that's the third thing. You have to be patient and kind to yourself. I know that we look in the mirror and we are so critical of ourselves. We um, are just mean to ourselves we the first thing we do is go into criticism of ourselves and what is wrong with us instead of complimenting ourselves and focusing on the successes that we've had in our life focusing on the good things that we have right because the universe loves grateful people so it's really important to be in gratitude but it's also important for you to be patient and kind to yourself right? Because that's an energy. And if you're not patient and kind to yourself, then who is? So like I said, we as women are so critical of ourselves, we actually self-abuse ourselves. We really do, because that is abuse. Um, and, you know, when I left my 22-year abusive relationship, I finally had the courage to leave. I finally got into the mindset of fuck this. I don't want to be here anymore. I want a better life. And in that moment, I realized I deserve that. And I deserve a life filled with love, peace, and happiness. So I'm going to go and share the screen again, because I want to show you this quote. Um, there goes my video. Okay, here we are. Sometimes it does that. Um, okay, share screen. So this, this was a quote that I had in the book that I showed you in the beginning of the call. And 
it says, I didn't know what the future held, but I knew this. It was better than the past. And that is the absolute truth of where I was and knowing that I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know, but I knew that it was going to be better than the past. That was the only thing I knew. So let me go to stop sharing. Awesome. Okay. So, and that's the attitude you have to have. You have to really just go in with, hey, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that that back there is not what I want. So I'm going to go this way so that I can start something, create something, make my life happen. So with that, I started a plan and I gave myself five months. I had a deadline. And on this date, I will have this amount of money. Okay, this is, this is the beginning of me planning to leave my 22-year marriage um, and leaving Florida and coming here to North Carolina, right? It started with just a thought. And, and if you can think something, it is true. So with that, I had that plan. On this date, we are leaving. On this date, this was happening right? Feel that determination that I had um, five months. And in the course of that five months, I manifested $10,000 and I booked a moving truck and a car carrier. So here we were, two girls in a moving truck. My daughter was 17 when we left. And so it was my car, her car, and a moving truck when we left South Florida and moved up here to North Carolina. So we drove, I drove the moving truck and her car on the back and she, she drove my car up here. So as you can see, this was not the kind of divorce that could be happening in the same state. Um, and I just wanted out of Dodge. I just really wanted to create a new life. And I wanted to see like what, what was ahead of me. So, um, I got in the mindset that this is happening. Like, no matter what, this is happening. I'm leaving on this date and I will have this amount of money. Now, I say that I left with $10,000 and that may sound like a lot, but it's not when you, you know, not to mention that I did that without a job. And I basically begged, borrowed, and stole to make that $10,000 happen. I didn't have a job in Florida, and I didn't have a job up here. I, manif I literally manifested that $10,000. I had that amount set in my head, along with the date and along with determined to come here. See, it's this right here, ladies. It's your mindset that makes things happen, right? This is what I mean. Nobody's coming to save you. You're the only one that can make things happen. So 10,000 is not, you know, a lot when you're starting all over again in a completely different state with no family and no help, right? I'm not the type of person that mooches or asks people for things. I make things happen on my own. So we literally left Florida with a futon couch and air mattress. That was it. Futon couch and an air mattress. Everything was sold in Florida everything. We left everything behind. Our entire family, our friends. I sold every piece of jewelry um, that I had uh, that was worth anything. Um, I sold his jewelry, my jewelry, the furniture, anything that I could forge my name onto. I sold his guns on the street. I sold his trailer. Whatever I could, I sold it to bring money in, right? This was my way of showing the universe, like this is happening no matter what, this is happening. So I eventually got that $10,000. Um, actually, I had that $10,000 before we left because I was, and if you follow me, you've heard this story before, that before I came here to North Carolina, I spent 10 days in Colorado. My first time in Colorado. So um, that's not including that money that I had in Colorado. Um, so yeah, I was determined 
that this was happening. And that was the mindset that I had. I'm out of here. No matter what, on this date, it's happening. And I didn't know how. I really did not know how this was going to happen. I honestly did, didn't know how it was all going to happen. I just took one step at a time, right? So my first step was the date. I need a truck to leave. I need a car carrier, right? Book that. That was the first thing, right? And every single step that I took was, you know, were energy. It was a vibration that I was sending out to the universe that this was happening. Whatever came to me to do, that's what I did, right? So like I said, what's the first thing I need to do to get out of here? I need money. So I started to get that money. So your mindset is what you got, is what got you, my mindset is what got me into that situation. And my mindset is what got me out of that situation. Same thing for you. If you're in any kind of a situation right now where you're not happy with your life, whether that's relationship, finances, job, anything, your mindset got you into that and your mindset can get you out. So I left and I never looked back. I bought a life here. I had an apartment in four days. I had a job in four weeks. I never looked back because it was what I wanted and my mindset had got clear. It has gotten clear ever since then. My mindset has changed, evolved ever since then. I've even rocking and rolling ever since then. Like it's actually unbelievable what I've created in a short six years. So whatever it is that you were told growing up, see, and that's a thing about our minds and growing up. We've been so programmed. My mind was programmed to stand by your man, right? And not that my mom necessarily directly said this to me. It was more of the message behind, you know, her verbiage. Um, you got to stand by your man. That's your husband, right? You got to make things work out. That's your husband. He's the father of your children. That's your husband. And do whatever it takes. That's your husband. You only get married once. That's your husband, right? Those are the messages that I got. No, you don't have to do any of that. What you got to do is love yourself. That's what you got to do. Here's the thing about loving yourself. Ask, ask yourself this question. If I truly and deeply love myself, would I marry this man? Right? Everything starts right here. Would I have married this man? No. I definitely wouldn't. If I truly and deeply love myself, would I leave this relationship? Yes. And that was one of the first times that I expressed self-love to me was leaving that relationship and knowing that I deserve better and really going after it. And my self-love has just grown and grown and grown. It takes a lot of practice, right? But it's doable. If I truly and deeply love myself, would I endure this behavior? Let's just call it behavior. Honestly, I didn't even know it was abuse at the time. I really didn't. That was a hard pill for me to swallow too. To admit that I was an abused woman, that I was in an abusive relationship, right? That's, ugh. Because here's the thing about narcissists. I don't know if any of you have come across them or have any in your family, but here's what I do know. You can be in an abusive relationship without a narcissist in it, but you cannot be in a relationship with a narcissist and it not be abusive. I'm going to say that again. You can be in an abusive relationship without a narcissist in it, but you cannot be in a relationship with a narcissist and it not be abusive. That's a fact. 
So the only relationship that you can have with a narcissist is no relationship at all. That's a fact. Because they're controlling, manipulative, um, don't give two shits about you, your kids, especially themselves. Although on the outside, it seems as they do, but it's not. They actually loathe themselves. So if someone loathes themselves, then how could they possibly love anyone else? Right? Think about that. They can't. So I teach my clients how to love themselves and to be a certain and to a certain degree, they do love themselves when they come to me, but they don't get the whole concept of self-love, right? Pretty much all of my clients um, and women that come to me are or were in a relationship with a narcissist. You have to understand how narcissists operate and know that any relationship with them is abusive. So I want to end this talk with this. First, be patient and kind to yourself. That is an act of self-love. And just have the awareness of, wow, when I look at myself in the mirror, I'm not so nice to myself. I'm going to start to change that. Or being aware of the unhealthy relationship that you may have, whether that's, like I said, with a spouse, coworkers, family, friends, whoever. The awareness is your first step to be like, huh. And then do something about it. So I always love to give this tip. When you wake up in the morning and you go into the bathroom and you brush your teeth, you're looking at yourself in the mirror, start to say nice things to yourself only, right? Start to be patient and kind to yourself. That is part of loving yourself. So I thank you for being here. And if at any time you want to get on a call, and talk about the narcissist in your life, the relationship, or even just to make a plan of life in your life, I am here. You can reach me um, on my website, denisedominguez.com. Um, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'll put the links in the description on the YouTube for the replay. And um, I offer 90 minutes. Uh, complimentary coaching calls with uh, you leaving the call feeling amazing and also with assignments, tools that you can start to use right away. That's my goal to help you in any which way I can. So thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate you all being here and I will see you next Tuesday. So next Tuesday's call is, ooh, Next Tuesday's call is, what does I love you mean from a narcissist? Yeah, I've done that call before and um, it's pretty powerful. So I look forward to seeing you next week and have a beautiful week. Bye.